So last week, we saw our Bayes' theorem, and we used it to solve a little problem. And the problem was that there's a coin, Acme Coin Company, that makes head bias coins with a probability of 0.75 of coming up heads, and tail bias coins with a probability of 0.25 of coming up heads. And I had a coin in my pocket, and I wanted to determine the probability that it was a head bias coin. So I did a little bit of an experiment. And so ultimately, I calculated the posterior belief of having a head bias coin, given the data I got when I flipped the coin 10 times and got four heads. I could calculate the posterior probability of having a head bias coin by taking my prior probability that I had a head bias coin was 0 0.80, and then considering the data, which was captured by this part of the equation, multiplying those together gave me the posterior probability of having a head bias coin, which is a nice introduction to Bayes' theorem, but it's a bit limited in it only had two alternatives, two possible values of theta, 0 0.75 and 0 0.25. And now what I want to do is I want to expand that and consider five possible values of theta. And it's going to be based on a book by McElrath called Statistical Rethinking. And the goal is to determine the proportion of the Earth that's covered by water. Or we could alternatively think of that as the probability of a randomly selected point being water. Either one of those two things we can view as theta. So the goal is to come up with the posterior distribution of theta, the proportion of the Earth that's covered by water, with the assumption being that there's only five possible values of theta, and they're shown here. So we're going to assume there's only five possible values for the probability that a randomly selected point on the globe is going to be water. So I begin by assigning prior probabilities to each one of these values of theta. And if I look at this, I can see my best guess, if there are only five possible values of theta, my best guess is that 0 0.75, there's a decent chance that it could be 0 0.0, or excuse me, 0 0.70, and not very much chance at all there would be any of these three values. So I start off with my prior information, and then what I do is I do a little experiment. Or the way McKellar describes it, he takes a globe, takes a little globe here, tosses it up in the air, grabs it, and comes down. And there's his hand, and wherever his thumb is, he records that as being either water or land, where success is water. Now, I didn't do that. I just went on to Google found out that the proportion of the Earth's surface covered by water was 0 0.71, and then just used R to take a random sampling based on the binomial, and that gave me 4 water and 6 land. But that was the data. Y is equal to 4, N is equal to 10. So now let's see if we can use that to get a good understanding of Bayes' theorem. This is without doubt the most important formula of the workshop. And this really is the most important table, the most important figure in the workshop. So it's, it's really worth spending some time trying to get your head around it. So there we have the different values of theta. We have five and only five possible values of theta. And we've assigned the prior probability associated with each of those. So there's our prior right there. So this is our prior. And then what we're going to do is we're going to calculate this thing. Probability of data given theta, there it is right there, and this is a likelihood function. This is a likelihood function, and something we're going to see over and over again when it comes to likelihood function, there's two things to bear in mind. First of all, it's going to reflect the process that gave rise to the data. So this globe tossing experiment fits all the features of a binomial probability distribution. So that's what we're distribution we're going to use to evaluate this. The second thing about a likelihood function, as you recall from week one, is the data remain constant and the parameter changes. So given the process, so the data are constant and data changes. So there's our formula for the binomial. The data are kept constant. N is equal to 10. 
y is equal to 4. And then what we do is for each one of these values of theta, we insert them in here and calculate probability of data conditional upon theta. So we take 0 0.60, put it in there, get this, take 0 0.65, put it in here, get that. So each one of these values here is the conditional probability, you can think of it as the likelihood of the data conditional upon theta. The next step, what we're going to do is take each one of these priors and multiply it by the likelihood and multiply it by the likelihood. So, what happens when we multiply the probability of theta times the conditional probability of data given theta? What's that going to give us? That's going to give us the joint probability. That's going to give us the joint probability of theta and data. So each one of these values here obtained by multiplying the prior by the likelihood, each one of these values here is going to be the joint probability of theta and the data. In the next step, I'm going to add all these five values together and I'm going to get that. What is this thing? What is this 0 0.03027? That is the marginal probability of the data. And that ought not to be too surprising. Because remember, if we wanted to calculate the marginal probability of a tree being a pine, how did we do that? We considered the joint probability of pine together with all the different height classes, and then we summed over all the different height classes. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to consider the joint probability of theta and data. We're going to consider our joints, and then we're going to get the marginal probability of the data by summing all those joints over all the values of theta. So that's going to give us the marginal probability of data. Then what we're going to do is take each one of these individual joint probabilities, each one of these joint probabilities, and divide them by the marginal probability of data. So what do we get when we take probability of theta and data and divide by the marginal probability of data? That gives us the conditional probability of theta given data. And that's our goal. That's our goal, the posterior probability of these different values of theta, the proportion of the earth covered by water, conditional upon the data. So that's one way to think about how we got our goal, the final target, the posterior probability of theta. There's another way, however, to think about how we got these values. Here are three different numbers. They sum to 18. I take each one of these numbers, divide them by 18 to get the transformed value. Now, obviously, the relative size of these numbers is exactly the same as the relative size of those numbers. However, these numbers add up to 1. So what we're doing when we take these joints and divide them by the marginal to wind up with the conditional, we now have a series of numbers that add up to 1 and our legitimate probabilities, our posterior probabilities. But the thing to bear in mind is the role of this marginal probability of the data is actually just to act as a normalizing constant to convert these things that don't add to 1 to these things that do add to 1. And that's going to be turned out to be quite important later on. The reason that's going to be quite important later on is there's our Bayes' theorem. And it's devilishly hard to calculate this thing in practice because it's devilishly hard to calculate the denominator. But if in fact the denominator is just a normalizing constant that takes these values and converts it to those values, then we can simply get rid of it and change this to a proportionality sign. And then what we're going to see is having done that, we can obtain the posterior distribution by using Markov chain Monte Carlo sampling of this product without having to worry about the very difficult 
task of determining the marginal probability of data. So, in summary, what we did was we started off with a prior belief like this, and then we got some data. And if we think of this thing down here as being a number line, these are different values of theta, 0 0.8, 0 0.75, 0 point, whatever. Remember, we got four waters in 10 trials. In other words, 0 0.4 would be the, that 0 0.4, if this was a number line, would be way out here. So we got data way out here, and that caused a shift from the prior to the posterior. And if you're wondering about this little dip here, the reason that that dip is occurring is that if you think about these are the data, given the data, then it seems more reasonable. There's going to be a higher probability associated with 0 0.6, which is closer to this than with 0 0.65, which is further away from this. So that's just going through Bayesian analysis and a very important table. It's really worthwhile to try to get your head around this. And again, the basic idea that we start off with some prior beliefs, we collect some data, and then what we wind up with at the end is a balance between, a blending between the prior here and the data here. Prior here, the data here is going to give us ultimately our posterior there.